Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about Western Differential Poly. For, to explain that, we have selected a simple um, differential, differential pulley here. Um, this has very low maintenance and this is the simplest form of the differential uh, pulley. You also have duplex and triplex, but this is the simplest one. So before we see how it works, let's talk about why it we call it a different, differential pulley. There's two reasons for that. The two reasons are uh, to obtain power. You can obtain power using um, Western differenti differential pulley. You have to give less force to rise um, higher uh, load. The second reason is that self-sustained. So um, you see without any stopper or anything the load doesn't fall down. So this is the two reason um, it is called uh, differential uh, pulley system. Now let's see what the pulley system uh, is made of. So the differential pulley system is made of with a pulley wheel here to, sus to raise the load, attach the load with the pulley. It has an inlet chain so it goes back to loop and you also have a, a single piece double um, differential pulley wheel here what it means that you have one pulley at the front which is a little bit smaller and then the pulley at the back is a little bit uh, bigger so the only difference between them they look same and the only difference is that um, they have only one teeth of a change between those so the front pulley has 16 teeth and uh, the back pulley has eight, uh, 17 teeth so it is slightly smaller uh, bigger than the front pulley but both the pulley wheel are attached together so it's a single piece so one end of the pulley carrying the weight this uh, chain goes to the bigger pulley at the back and the other uh, end of this uh, pulley here goes to the uh, opposite end of the smaller pulley. So this cord goes to the back with bigger pulley on left side. This cord goes to the front pulley on this side. So from this loose loop here, if I pull on the left side, um, this pulley weight will go downward. And if I pull on the right side, um, you see the loop is getting bigger here so meaning the weight is going upward so if I pull on the left side this loop is getting shorter so the pulley is getting going downward if I pull on that side the loose loop is getting bigger it's going uh, upward so the question comes that why we're using almost same size um, single uh, piece double differential pulley system uh, here so the pulleys are only one teeth off so they're almost the same to have the same tension on both sides so you see the weight uh, of the pulley here downwards so they have the same tension on both sides so this tension goes to the one pulley and this goes to the other pulley so since they are almost same size of the pulley here the tension on the both side is the same so the next question is how we are obtaining power using this system how um, this is self-sustained well um, this small difference on the gear teeth causing uh, giving us the power and um, it is self-sustained because this part is pulling the pulley the back bigger pulley on this direction and this part this cord is pulling the uh, smaller pulley on this side so they're both balanced and that's why in every position it's self-sustained if I change a new position it is still self-sustained it doesn't fall down if the both pulley up here single piece uh, double differential pulley if they were of the same size the weight here would not raise you, you you will not be able to raise the load upward or downward but uh, even a slightest change here you see we can 
we are able to raise and um, lower the um, the load. Now we are going to run some simple tests to calculate the mechanical advantage, uh, velocity ratio, and uh, uh, eventually the efficiency. So for that we have a, a force meter here. Um, if we put it like that, we have almost zero newton. And if I hang from this side, we have the weight of the weight scale, um, force scale here, so which is about 5, 0.5 uh, newton. So now we're gonna put uh, this on on the loose end here, and I put it there. So now I can look at the weight, um, the force, Newton force that I need uh, to pull this weight up. So if I pull, pull, and then now it starts to move, so it's about um, 0.67 Newton to pull this load. So here I have um, 30 um, coin, 30 coins here, each coin is 10 gram. And uh, the block itself um, is 10 grams, so I have 310 gram, which converts to 3.04 Newton. So what we got is that to raise 3.04 Newton, I just needed uh, 0.7 Newton. So now using this data, we're going to calculate the mechanical advantage, um, velocity ratio, and uh, eventual efficiency. Now we're going to do the calculation part. Uh, mechanical advantage um, is defined by load, the load we're uh, lifting, and then the required force, the force we give. So our calculation becomes 3 newton over 0.7 newton, so our mechanical advantage is 4.3. The velocity ratio is defined, VR, is, uh, there's three ways to find that. If you know the diameter, the bigger pulley diameter is big D, uh, capital D. And the small pulley diameter, the small pulley here, um, is the uh, smaller d. So, and if you know the radius, we can also write it in the same way, 2r. So you see the r here, the bigger pulley diameter, so the diameter of this big pulley, uh, of the uh, of the top pulley, top two pulley that are joined together, and then the front pulley is the smaller r so if we know that we can also use this equation if somehow uh, if you don't know the bigger uh, the diameter or the radius of the pulleys which is in our case i didn't know the diameter of the pulleys and they are almost the same well, i only know the number of teeth so you can also use the number of teeth to find the velocity ratio because the teeth are pulled by the same chain so the teeth length um, uh, are the same for this pulley and that pulley so there the radius and diameter uh, the perimeter of those uh, pulley wheel is dependent on the number of teeth so we can also use 2 t1 t1 minus t2 so t1 is the teeth of the bigger pulley and t2 is the teeth number of a smaller pulley so our case we have 17 teeth in the bigger pulley so 17 into 2 and then the, we have a 16 teeth on the smaller pulley which gives us a large number of velocity ratio which is 34. Now we're gonna plug this into um, our efficiency equation which can be uh, determined as, as so mechanical advantage over velocity ratio that gives us 12.7 percent so it is a very low efficiency. So how do how can we increase the efficiency? Well you see if you have the lower number 34 uh, if the lower it would be, the higher the efficiency will be. So in our cases, our R, the radius of the bigger pulley was almost same as the smaller pulley because they had the almost same teeth, 17 and 16 teeth, right? Um, so that's why the R are so close. That's why we have a high number here and then our efficiency is very low. If we can have very big difference um, between those, then our efficiency will go high. In other words, if we have a fixed efficiency, for example, efficiency, efficiency of 70% or 60%, um, if we increase the velocity ratio, 
uh, velocity ratio VA uh, we can also get higher uh, mechanical advantage <laughs> so and if we reduce the velocity ratio we'll get lower mechanical advantage so uh, the more the smaller pulley ratio tends to closer to the higher uh, the larger pulley ratio the more mechanical advantage we get so you see in our problem we get a very high mechanical advantage of 4.3 this is because of our small r is closer to the bigger r so which means our uh, this pulley fixed pulleys are closer to each other so if you have any more question about the differential pulley system just comment below uh, and we'll explain it to you thank you